my mom didn't expect me to be born missing my leg. The doctors didn't expect it, and they never could really give us an exact answer as to what happened. Anthony Robles is no stranger to overcoming obstacles, and he certainly never let them hold him back. I finished high school, two-time high school state champ, high school national champ, honor roll student. So I was expecting a wrestling scholarship. But even in the midst of success, Anthony learned that it's easy to feel forgotten. It was just a time like, where, where are you at, God? You know, where, what's what's this plan? You know, at that point, I was like, God, I don't want your plan anymore. Like, God, I don't see it. I mean, clearly, you don't care about me. You've just forgotten about me. I don't need you anymore. Anthony Robles has learned what it means to overcome adversity, and in a lot of ways, he's used adversity as a way to fuel himself. At the center of all of that is his faith in God. Anthony Robles is our guest on this episode of GPS, God, People, Stories. It's an outreach of the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. I'm Phil Fleischman. And I'm Ethan Jones. Anthony's life is a picture of courage, self-discipline, and commitment. You're going to hear more about that kind of life from Billy Graham. Christ never allowed anyone to be a bystander or a spectator. He said that we were to overcome the world, the flesh, and the devil by living a yielded life filled with the Holy Spirit and a self-disciplined life. Would you like to know more about how to live a life dedicated to Jesus Christ? Visit us at findpeacewithgod.net. That site can help you begin a relationship with Jesus, as well as help you deepen your relationship if you're already a follower of Christ. The address again is findpeacewithgod.net. We have a link to it in the show notes. GPS. God. People. Stories. There's like 20,000 fans in the arena. And I jump on the mat and I look up and in one section was my mom, of course, screaming up there. That's Anthony Robles describing the day he won the 2011 NCAA wrestling tournament. His mom was there in full support, encouraging her son, something that Anthony says he'd always been able to count on. She was the rock of the household. She was the one I looked to. Uh, she was my role model, my inspiration. You know, she was, she was someone who always pushed me back to my relationship with God. And so it was just, uh, it was cool because, you know, just growing up, she loved her kids. She would do anything she could for them. And she'd work uh, side jobs just to make extra money for the family. But uh, she sacrificed so much for all of us. His mother was no stranger to hard work and responsibility. Anthony was born when his mom was only 16, but she was eager to step up to the plate, and she couldn't wait to meet her son. On the day she finally did, she discovered something that neither she nor the hospital staff could have ever expected. Anthony was born with just one leg. They said it was just a rare, rare thing and never could really give us an exact answer as to what happened. From day one, Anthony and his mom had to learn to overcome challenges, but that was not going to stop either one of them. I mean, there's just constantly uh, little memories like that of her just pushing me and encouraging me and, uh, you know, just showing me that uh, I was unstoppable, really, in my life. I mean, she tells me that it was God-given, but just her sense of not treating me differently, you know, of not allowing me to use my missing legs as an excuse, uh, that shaped my life. Anthony's mom was convinced that her son could do anything he put his mind to. Here's a perfect example. I mean, my mom bought me a bike for one of my birthdays. I want to say I was like seven or eight years old. And, uh, you know, there were friends of the family who were at my birthday party. And my mom pulls this bike out from around the corner of the house. right? And I'm excited. I'm looking at it. My eyes are wide. And, uh, you know, I just remember there it was kind of a look of concern of some people that were there, you know, and, and they didn't think I could ride a bike because I was missing a leg. But my mom, I mean, that was never, that never crossed her mind. Anthony did learn how to ride a bike, and he didn't stop there. In fact, he spent most of his time as a kid playing sports. I learned how to do things in a different way. But to me, it wasn't strange and it wasn't, uh, it wasn't difficult because it was just all I knew. You know, whereas everybody else is like, they have two legs and they figure out how to play baseball or ride a bike or whatever. This is all I've ever known. So it was like, you know, I'm just going to figure it out. Like me missing a leg was never something that popped into my head to where I was thinking, I can't play basketball because I can't run up, I can't run up and down the court. You know, I can't play baseball because whatever. It was just, okay, you know, how am I going to do this? While Anthony didn't allow himself to be slowed down by having only one leg, he did get discouraged at times while he was growing up. There were certain times where it was really hard. You know, I remember my, my first grade, first day of first grade, 
you know, I was on the reset in recess. I was on the playground and I remember just seeing a tire swing and I wanted to play with the kids on the tire swing. And I, so I walk up to him and I was like, can I play with you? And one of the kids was like, I don't want to play with you. You're missing your leg. And that, that shocked me. You know, I was like, Whoa, what, wh- why? And so it, it hurt my self-confidence for quite a while. Overcoming challenges and pushing yourself weren't the only things Anthony's mom encouraged him to do. She also encouraged him to develop his relationship with God. She made sure to keep faith in Christ at the center of their family. I remember growing up and we would memorize Bible verses. You know, we, we would uh, just get together and, and just, uh, uh, you know, read, uh, read, read chapters in the Bible, read certain stories, you know, and just kind of just go through it as a family together. The day Anthony made the decision to surrender his life to Jesus is a day that stands out in his memory. It happened at a church event in the Anaheim Angels baseball stadium when he was eight years old. And, you know, I just remember being there with my mom and a family friend and their daughter. And, uh, you know, they gave the call to accept Jesus as their Lord and Savior. And I just remember just being so excited. And I, like, I stood up right away. You know, I'm like, I'm, I wasn't even looking around to see who else was standing up. I just like I jumped up I'm like, yes, yeah, me. Eventually, Anthony and his family would move from California to Arizona to help plant a church. The move took place right before his freshman year of high school, and Anthony's interest in sports hadn't diminished one bit. He had been focusing on playing football until his cousin suggested he try something new. He's like, I know you're trying to get stronger and bigger for football. He's like, why don't you come with me to wrestling practice? We got a a weight room connected to to our wrestling room. He's like, you can you can lift while we're wrestling. And if you decide you're interested, you can jump on the mat. That sounded good to Anthony. He'd go and lift weights, but he really didn't have any interest in wrestling. Then one day the coach approached him with a request. He's like, hey, uh, our 103 pounder, 103 pounder, he needs someone to wrestle with. He's like, how much do you weigh? I was like, I'm like 90 pounds. He's like, great. He's like, you know, if if you want to wrestle with him, he's like, you just need someone to drill with. Go ahead and jump out there if you'd like. Anthony decided he'd give it a try. I go out there and I just remember just, I was just getting thrown around the room. I didn't know anything. I just was just thinking football tackle, right? Like tackle him, grab his legs, take him to the ground. And so I'm just, I'm just scrapping. I don't know what I'm doing. This guy's throwing me around and, and I end that match. Like I'm bloodied up. My shirt's all stretched out. My lungs are just on fire. But I had this instant passion for wrestling, you know, and I I couldn't explain it to people. I couldn't explain it at that moment. I didn't know what it was, but I felt like this was what I was supposed to do all along. This is what I was meant to be doing all along. And I just couldn't wait to get home and, and talk to my mom about it. When he did, his mom didn't quite share the excitement that Anthony had. I walked to the door uh, after practice that day. And like I said, I'm all bloodied up. Right. So my shirt's all, I had a white t-shirt. So there's blood all over and my face is scratched in my neck. And she's like, that doesn't look very fun to me. She's like, no. But Anthony couldn't stop talking about wrestling. And his mom finally did what she had always done. And she encouraged him to go for it. My mom could see in my eyes and just, she could just feel it that I was just really excited about this, very passionate about it. And so I think, you know, at that moment when she saw the passion in my eyes, she didn't want to be the one Uh, to take that passion away, you know? So she said, all right. She said, if that's what you really want to do, I'll sign you up. It was what he really wanted to do. He started to eat, sleep, and breathe wrestling. And even though he had learned to confront and even enjoy challenges, this one was on a different level. Like everything else, I had to figure it out my own way. I had to find a unique way to do it. And, you know, wrestling in general, it's tough. But, you know, because my coaches had never coached a kid who was missing a leg... They were basically trying to figure out a whole new style of wrestling with me, you know, things that they didn't know how to teach me. It was literally me going out on a wrestling mat, trying my best, coaches taking notes and like, okay, you know what, we could do something in this area. You know, we could work here. Okay, we need to stay away from this area. Little by little, Anthony and his coaches found new methods and strategies that would allow him to compete in the sport. Eventually, they found their answer in something that had been a part of Anthony's life since he was a kid. We figured out that you know, with me being on my crutches basically my whole life, it's like I'm working out 24 seven, you know, I'm doing dips all the time. So, you know, even though I was light, I was strong for my weight class and my grip was always phenomenal. And so, you know, we, I would do rock climbing, I would do grip machines, things like that, just to strengthen my grip. You know, as soon as I was able to take my opponents down, if I got a wrist, I could turn them to their back. The commitment to push past his disadvantage paid off for Anthony. 
By his junior year in high school, he was becoming one of the most dominant wrestlers in Arizona, and his senior year was no different. Anthony finished the season with 96 wins and zero losses, undefeated. I finished high school, two-time high school state champ, high school national champ, honor roll student, so I was expecting a wrestling scholarship. But that scholarship never came. Despite his success in high school, there weren't many colleges willing to give Anthony a spot on their team. They said, number one, I was too small. And they said, number two, we can't risk a scholarship on you. And so I didn't get that opportunity. Schools didn't recruit me. That didn't stop Anthony, though. He kept searching for schools that would give him a chance to compete. And he found one. It didn't offer the full ride scholarship he was expecting, but it was a school that seemed like a good fit. I talked to Arizona State, uh, and they were the only one, really one of the only ones who would just give me an opportunity to try out. They said, well, we don't have money for you right now, but you have good grades so we can help you get a a partial academic scholarship. If you prove yourself down the road, if you can make the the starting lineup and do well, we can talk about a wrestling scholarship. He accepted and made the team as a walk-on. While the partial academic scholarship was a help, it didn't cover all of his college expenses. So Anthony got a job to cover the difference. I'd go to school, go to practice, and my night job was at the airport. I would work at Scottsdale Airport and Sky Harbor Airport here in Phoenix. Um, I would basically go in these huge hangars at night, and I would wash and wax airplanes and vacuum them out, cleaning them up. Uh, And that was my job, you know, for two years. Things were going great, but Anthony's schedule was tight, and the pressure was mounting. Grades, his job at the airport, wrestling practice, it was a lot to manage. Then, on top of all of that... During a phone call with his mom, Anthony learned that things weren't going so well back home. I could tell something was wrong, and she told me, that she's like, your dad left. She's like, I don't know where he is, but he's gone. And, you know, I had, like I said, three brothers, one sister. At that time, none of them were in high school yet. And, you know, my mom, she was literally, she was selling her blood once a week to put food on the table for my, my family. I mean, our, our church friends, the church I did stepped up and, you know, they were sending us meals every, every so often when they could. But, you know, my mom eventually lost the house because she couldn't afford the mortgage on her own. Anthony was devastated. He started to feel as though God had abandoned him and his family. It was just a time like, where, where are you at, God? You know, where, what's, what's this plan? I was very bitter, to be honest. You know, at that point, I was like, God, I don't want your plan anymore. Like, God, I don't see it. I mean, clearly, you don't care about me. You've just forgotten about me. I don't need you anymore. It seemed like things were starting to spiral out of control, and Anthony didn't know how he could help his family survive the storm. In the midst of it, though, Anthony's mom reminded him of God's faithfulness. God has us. She'd always tell me that. God has us. She said, just pray. God has us. That reminder helped Anthony rely on God's strength rather than his own. Fortunately, it didn't take long before things started turning around. My mom started rebuilding herself. You know, she started working at Arizona State. Uh, she got a job there. And uh, when she got that job, she had an awesome opportunity to be able to take classes at ASU for, I, I believe for her, it was for free. And so, you know, she didn't have an opportunity to get her college degree because she had me at such a young age. But at this moment, it was like, okay, the path is just kind of being laid out for her to be able to do that now. You know, and I could just see, I could see my mom's just her self-confidence start to develop. You know, those opportunities for her start to just present themselves. God didn't stop there, though. Going into his junior year at Arizona State, Anthony was offered a full-ride wrestling scholarship, which allowed him to use his money from work to help out his family. God was using these opportunities. You know, he was helping us to keep the faith. You know, he was showing himself um, in these instances. We were just, uh, you know, we just had to look for him. You know, and I, I think uh, I think that's what was hard for me for the longest time was all I saw was the darkness and the trials, but I didn't take the time to uh, to look for God, um, to look for those those um, those moments where He really showed Himself to me. God had made Himself evident to Anthony and his family, even in the midst of their struggles. Fueled by God's faithfulness, Anthony had a new resolve, and by the time his senior year rolled around. He was firing on all cylinders. I went in with a fire like, this is my last year. I'm going to make the most of it. I was just having so much fun out there wrestling because I felt like I was wrestling for a bigger purpose than just myself. Yeah, I was still wrestling for myself for a title, but I felt like, you know, I kind of understood like at that moment I, I had a platform that I had been given. By the end of the wrestling season, Anthony once again held an undefeated record and he was the number one ranked wrestler in the country. 
Even though Anthony had accomplished what would likely seem impossible to most people, he still had one more thing to do, win the NCAA wrestling championship. I knew from the very beginning of the season, I had to wrestle the returning national champ. You know, he was going to be the guy that I had to beat. And I jump on the mat and the fear, any, any doubt just drained out of my mind. 20,000 fans, two wrestlers, one match. Everything Anthony had overcome since he was a kid had led up to this moment. The wrestlers shake hands and the match begins. You know, I was like, okay, this is what I've been training to do. Do what I train to do. So I took him down. Anthony's unorthodox approach to wrestling was about to pay off. The tactics and methods he'd been crafting since he first started wrestling in high school made it nearly impossible for his opponents to train for their matches against him. We were fighting, both of us, for dear life. Me trying to get it, him trying to keep it away from me. But I got it. And I, I started turning him. And by the end of the first period, I think I was up like six or seven to zero. The match ended up being a landslide. The final score was 7-1, to one, and Anthony was now the 2011 NCAA wrestling champion. You know, it doesn't matter if it's on a wrestling mat like this or in life, we all got to wrestle with challenges. You know, there's always opportunities where we can be broken, but it's about how you respond to that. You're going to go through hard times. You're going to go through trials. You're not going to understand it. You're not going to see the bigger picture. But that doesn't matter. What matters is that you keep the faith. You know, that's the whole thing, entrusted in God. He always has a plan, and we have to remember that. He loves us. He has our best interests at heart. And so we have to tell ourselves that, even in the hard times. I don't like it. I don't want to be here. But God's plan is always better than my plan. Anthony Robles is confident that God has a plan for his life, even when it might be difficult to see or understand that plan. It can be easy to feel forgotten, though, especially when we face adversity. But you can have the same confidence that Anthony does by beginning a relationship with Jesus Christ. We can tell you more about how to do that at this website, findpeacewithgod.net. Again, that's findpeacewithgod.net. It's pretty obvious that Anthony loves a challenge. Now, in just a minute, you're going to hear about his latest challenge, breaking world records. You're listening to GPS, God, People, Stories, a podcast production of the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. Today, we need desperately to have men and women of courage and discipline, for courage and discipline are contagious. Billy Graham. The Bible teaches that every Christian is to live a life of self-denial and self-discipline. In the New Testament, there are many verbs used to describe this kind of life. We're told that as Christians, we're to fight, wrestle, run, strive, suffer, endure, resist, agonize. Christ never allowed anyone to be a bystander or a spectator. He said that we were to overcome the world, the flesh, and the devil by living a yielded life filled with the Holy Spirit and a self-disciplined life. Today, I'm calling upon Christians everywhere to come to Jesus Christ in dedication, surrender, and self-discipline. If you'd like to hear the rest of that challenging message, head over to the Billy Graham Audio Archives. You'll find them at this website, billygrahamradio.org. Just search for the title, Personal Courage and Discipline. We also have a link to the message in the show notes. Anthony Robles is our guest on this episode of GPS. And since winning the 2011 NCAA Wrestling Championship, Anthony has set out to keep challenging himself. Most recently, that has meant breaking world records in different categories of pull-ups. I just got done breaking the Guinness record for most pull-ups in a minute with a 60-pound pack. This was my third record that I broke, but I broke this one in my old wrestling room at Mesa High School. So, you know, that's where I started wrestling. My old high school coach, coaches are still there coaching. My mom was there. So it was just these really special individuals who have uh, been a huge part of my life in this area, in this room that was very special, very, uh, uh, it was very emotional for me. So to break it there, uh, it was a dream. It was really cool. So in addition to winning wrestling tournaments and breaking world records, Anthony Robles has also written a book. It's titled Unstoppable, From Underdog to Undefeated how I became a champion. We really appreciate Anthony taking the time to share his story with us. I'm Phil Fleischman. And I'm Ethan Jones. We also want to thank you for listening. If you enjoyed this episode of GPS, we would love it if you shared it on your favorite social media platform. When you do, tag us at Billy Graham Radio and let us know what you liked about it. 
GPS, God, People, Stories. It's an outreach of the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association. Always good news. Now.